Hello, I'm Ben, DivKid, and I'm proud to introduce to you Path, a new Yoro Rack module from Vostok Instruments and DivKid, me. If you know Trace, you can think of Path as the anti-trace. It takes one input and morphs its routing to four different outputs. Here's what's to come in the video. <laughs> Here I'd usually insert a joke about how this video is sponsored by me. I haven't paid me to say this, but go buy a path. Firstly, we'd like to thank everyone for their support and interest with Trace and now Path. It's been really fun to see people guessing what Path could be alongside the teasers that we put out, and we really appreciate it. Thank you. So I joked at the beginning that Path is kind of the anti-trace in that it provides the opposite kind of reverse scanning routing function. Trace here. The first Vostok Instruments and DivKid module is a four input, one output interpolating scanner that morphs through those four ins and outputs that blended and scanned signal. PATH is the same 4HP profile and nearly exactly the same layout, but here we have one input that morphs its routing to four different outputs, like a morphing auxiliary send or a quadraphonic panner. Going down the panel here, we have one input, four outputs a manual fader control to morph through that signal routing. We have a CV input for the route, CV attenuator here, and a CV inversion switch. And it's worth noting that when nothing is patched into the input, there's a high voltage, approximately 10 volts present. So you can use this like a manual kind of macro performance control for different parts of your patch. Path follows the same affordable pricing we set out for Trace, and of course it's a great combo having Trace and Path working together. In this announcement video I have four patches to show you creative audio routing, powerful modulation routing, musical trigger distribution, and an interesting approach to performable panning and send controls. The timing index is on screen and in the description down below. Skip around as you like and let's dive in. Now in this first patch, I'm using Path here as an advanced effect send where these effects can trail. And you can hear this under modulation firing off into bits of delays, chorus and reverb. Just play around for a moment. Because it really does sound good. Removing the modulation, this is a pair of saw waves coming into a modulated filter, and that is the input to PATH. PATH will morph through routing this to four different outputs. The first one, green cable and green trace, comes into the scope to see it, but then it just goes off into my mixer, just as a mono dry channel. But as I morph up from one to two, blue trace and cable here feeds a delay, and then this goes into my mixer. We morph from delay to reverb on free. I'm sure we all love a humongous reverb from time to time. And then out of reverb. An output for there, yellow cable and trace, which is a chorus. And again, this like trace, this isn't a switch, this actually morphs and crossfades from where this routing happens, like a quad panner. 
allowing us to morph through this routing. And you could just use this performatively. Say from a bit of delay. Or some verb. And just play around over time where this is rooted. Say so slowly merge through those effects of the chorus at the top. Under CV control, where we change that routing by CV, here's a step sequence. So you can be creative with your patterns and choose what notes hit your reverbs, delays. I'm not just choosing when say an effect send happens, I'm choosing which send it sends to, or even a blend or morph between them. And like on Trace, you could push that fader to the top and invert the CV for a different pattern. And this kind of patching works well with LFOs, random voltages, or even envelopes firing off certain steps that blend through and push through to different places in a patch. So this patch is all about modulation as opposed to audio. And Path here is taking my input, a variety of modulation here that I'll get to, and it's choosing which of the four outputs, as visualised on data, that it routes to. And those modulate the four filter frequencies on four bandpass filters. The input to each filter is a different saw wave oscillator tuned to four notes within a chord. So by using path to modulate through where the modulation is going, different notes get emphasised. And I'll let you listen for a moment. As you may have guessed, Path with Trace is a really killer combo, and the output of Trace here is actually the input to Path. Trace is shifting through four different modulation sources. Trace is modulated, so if you follow these orange LEDs, you can see this scanning through four different types of modulation. That goes to Path, and Path then scans through where that modulation gets rooted. But let's really simplify this, and just kind of go from the beginning of the patch. If you listen to each of these filters, you can hear these different notes in a chord. Modulating each filter by hand there. But PATH has an actual internalised, normalised voltage. So if I remove this dummy cable, so the input lets this normalised voltage through, we can choose where to route the actual voltage, and you'll see this happening. So the actual voltage that is normalised there to path is coming out of these outputs and modulating these filters. As one goes up, one comes down, and I think that's, or I hope that's a really clear example of how this morphing routing actually works. If I simply patch an LFO into the CV of PATH, into the root CV, we'll go into the middle here, modulate with a bipolar LFO to push and pull that normalised voltage, as if I'm just pushing the fader up and down. Just this, as path with no input, works really well here. Just using an LFO to route a voltage to the four different filters. It works really well with this patch. If we cut the modulation here and actually patch the output of trace to the input of path, without modulating trace here, I'm just going to manually select some modulation. The first channel is an LFO, so this is in effect like patching an LFO directly into PATH. And again I can choose... ...where that gets rooted. Input 2 on Trace. Slower but more dramatic LFO in depth. Input 
free, do some stepped modulation. And input four is some audio rate modulation. Which kind of sounds the same, whichever filter I modulate. Now if I modulate trace, so put this in the middle, this is going to shift through all four different modulation sources, the two LFOs, the step signal, and the audio rate signal. Path is static, it's just outputting out of one here. But again, in this nice automated, kind of generative ambient fashion, let's get path modulated one last time. So again, an LFO to the root CV. To run down one last time, this is four modulation sources, two LFOs, a step signal and some audio rate modulation, and Trace is modulating, scanning through those four different modulators. That scanned modulation is the input to PATH, and PATH chooses which of four destinations, four different filter cutoffs here, that modulation is routed to. PATH arguably works just as well with, say, a single modulation source in here. But when you can scan through them with Trace and then morph through the routing of them in PATH, really is a killer combo. So here's a patch for audio again, where I was thinking of PATH as a quad panner. But I can't make a quadraphonic YouTube demo, but I imagine most of you couldn't listen to it because you maybe don't have four speakers or some kind of quadraphonic headphone device. So I wanted to kind of work in the idea here of actually using PATH as a panner, but one that's a bit more expressive and with this lovely effects at the top. So with this down at the bottom, my input is this delayed, noisy, chorus melody that's just repeating around. Like with the first patch here, my sound comes in, this is now coming out of output one, and this is just a clean mono channel in my mixer. The second and third outputs though go into a stereo channel, so as I morph the routing up to two, this actually pans my sound out to the left. From two to three will pan from left to right. And from three to four, sends this into a big stereo reverb for this kind of moment of glory at the end of the panning here. Give you another slow sweep up and down, grab some headphones or something so you can check it out. From mono, panning left, panning right, and then into a big bloom of reverb on the fourth output. this is a kind of standard panner here if I go back into mono but between two and three and add a little bit of an LFO here I'm panning that routing between two and three the output to left and right channels so we get a kind of basic auto pan if I modulate further than just that distance between two and three This interesting kind of tremolo between mono, stereo panning and firing some sound off into the reverb. So you can think of PATH as a quad panner if you have a quadraphonic setup, or really just a quad router, in this case from mono out to stereo left and right sides, with that bonus reverb on the fourth output. This patch is all about distributing triggers and doing that dynamically with changing levels and in this case pinging four filters. And it's ended up at this kind of like Claude Von Stroke, Dirty Bird record label kind of little house thing. If I mute the drums and some background effects for now, 
These filters have a little bit of FM. Their inputs, according to the colours on the scope and the outputs here and cables, have been pinged. And my trigger rhythm is rooting around them to create this pattern. If I cancel out the modulation, just by turning down the attenuator there, this envelope, it's the green trace here, comes out to ping this filter on one. And as I go up to two, notice I get a chord in between. Again, because this isn't a switch, we morph between them. Two is this one. Three. And four. And these filters are tuned to a chord and to ping a filter you simply strike it with a short trigger or in this case an envelope. Envelopes are a bit better to visualise on data there. So I can scan through which of these filters they actually ping. And we have a sequence coming into the root control here. There's lots of probability in this sequence, we create a little musical pattern. And again, unlike a switch, we're not just switching through them, we're getting chord tones where two of these ping with a nice interval between them at the same time. And rather than a sequence here, simply modulating with an LFO, this one that you can see blinking here, kind of scatters out these triggers and even though that's just a kind of randomly tuned LFO, if you like, it's quite interesting. Bringing the drums back in. You could use these triggers to trigger slow envelopes, to trigger sequences, to trigger drum sounds. I use the filter pings here because these are dynamic, they respond to the level coming in, whereas say the trigger input on a drum module typically doesn't. Equally, it doesn't have to be triggers, as you've seen in the video. This could be audio, modulation, anything you want to route anywhere, send it through path. Let's go from this scattery LFO back to my sequence. If you've got this far in the video, drop a root sync in the comments. How would you use PATH? What would you like to see with PATH or Trace or both of them together in future videos? Thanks for watching. Head to patreon.com forward slash divkid to support my work and to join the community. And I'll see you next time. Bye.